So distributors after the car, uh, caps off. You can see there the pickup, uh, magnet, magnet type pickup, um, which linked to this amplifier, which amplifies the change in magnetic field on those six pickups. Rotor arms there because obviously that defines where the spark's going because the ECU on this doesn't know which one to spark so it just sparks uh, six times per one revolution of the cam so three times per revolution of the crankshaft we're going to have to take all this off all this off because we're going to put in a uh, pickup for the well we're going to use a cam pickup but we're going to use a distributor to mount it because it's easier uh, and all the there's bob weights in here for advanced and retarding ignition and also we've got a diaphragm for uh, advanced and retarding ignition depending on the pressure in the inlet manifold so all of this has got to be taken out and then we're going to mount a cam pickup probably in here somewhere um, so we can utilize that there's some slight movement on this um, it bolts to the block there um, and then you get your advance and retard here because on this you know fuel injection electronic ignition you could advance and retard the ignition as well which advance and retarded the fuel injection system so we're gonna have to find out where we want the top dead center for the cam to be then relate that to the distributor so that it it know it thinks that this is a cam rather than a distributor but uh, first thing we're doing now is we're going to strip this down and start messing with it and try and get it right down to the bare bones so we can think about where we're going to put the cam sensor. Right, so what we're doing today is um, doing the cam set cam pickup. So works on a distributor. This vehicle, so it doesn't have a cam pickup. It's chain driven, not a cam belt, so it's hard to get in there to put a cam sensor in. So we're going to use the distributor to get the cam sensor. We're going to use what they call an inductive pulse. So we've got this here, it's a Vauxhall uh, inductive pulse. I've got the wiring loom. We're going to use this to set up where the engine can tell where the firing order is and what cylinder it's firing on. Uh, we're going to make this, we're going to use the distributor. We've got one here that we took out of another car. So I've stripped it all down. These are all the bits out of the distributor. What we're going to use is the um, the, the carcass of the distributor, I've emptied it all out and we're going to use, um, this is a bob weight springs so what I've done is I've used the bob weights and I've welded them to the spigot that goes up and down that advances and retards the ignition so now we can put that in and it lets it, um, it gives a good platform then to put the rotating metal for the pickup for the inductive pulse so this is going to go there, that's going to go in there and through and then we're going to make, uh, this gives us a good platform to make the rotating metal parts for the uh, the pickup for the inductive pulse. Um, I don't know how we're going to do that yet, I'm still on the way of doing it but uh, all of this basically now is junk because it's not uh, it's not what we need but we can might, might use some of it to, to help us along. We'll see how we go. Now this one's been modified, so as you can see, no HT leads coming out of the top. We've modified this to fit the cam sensor. And if I take that top off this, you'll see what we've got in there is uh, the sensor and the field is interrupted by the metal plate there that's welded to the what used to be the um, advanced and retard with the weights on um, I've put another metal under there to counterbalance the bit that I've put on over here so that then then bob weights have been welded um, and now that makes it a decent pickup for the cam position sensor so all I need to do now is put that in there line it all up and then that's a good one. Uh, we might have to modify the plate at the bottom to get the timing right but as it is at the moment I'm quite happy with it. Uh, we've got plenty of adjustment on it. It's got an offset keyway in the bottom which you have to be aware of uh, when you're putting it in 
so that's going to fix where the position is for the cam uh, but other than that that's come that's more or less done to where I want it to be obviously a bit more tidying up blanking some of these holes off that we've got in it just so debris and stuff don't get in and dust and stuff um, distributor oh, that's interesting that's the um, this is the colour the car is going to end up so now if you can see that it's a metallic Nissan metallic black so paint to the cap like that so you can see it in different sort of shades but uh, that's what we're going for on the car when it's done um, oh just a quick addition while I'm talking about the car I've just put a boot spoiler on not well a boot lip so you can see there that's um, that finishes the back of the car off really nicely I don't want out outstanding or out that you know catches you looking at but uh, it just finishes the boot line off that's a Datsun uh, Saab 900 rear window spoiler believe it or not right back to this now we're going to do the crank position sensor so uh, we're going to pick up on the crank position sensor the mounting oh, right I'm being pestered by it dog give me a sec there we go that's dog gone for a bit right the crank position sensor's going to be mounted so this is where the uh, front pulley is, we're going to use that as a crank position sensor, the mounting point for it is going to be these two bolts here and then we're going to pick another mounting point over here somewhere, the reason we're using these is because they're nice big thick sturdy bolts and we can use nice thick steel on them uh, to hold the crank position sensor which should not move at all um, the pickup is Vauxhall again, Corsa because um, it's you know, easy to get hold of. Uh, inductive pulse. So this magnet picks up from this wheel here, um, and that's the original one off the car. We're going to use that. What I've done is I've took this, cut away to pick up the teeth. 62 teeth minus two. Flip it over because it doesn't matter which way it goes, uh, and then we're going to put that. I don't know if I can show you this one hand, a bit, bit one handed here, but that's going to go on the back of there, uh, da, 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 like something like that. <laughs> there, I'm going to weld that in place and then use that pickup there for the pickup for the crank. Well, so let's see how that goes, unless I get pestered again by this. So now we've got the crank um, position sensor in, and that's the, I don't know if you can see it down there, the tooth wheel um, positioned on the pulley, at the back of the bottom pulley. Come around and under here. You can see more where it's mounted, and I've welded the trigger wheel on the back of the um, V belt pulley. Pop the trigger in there. The, um, the trigger wheel you should really have it on the ninth tool um, past the flat, the six, the minus two teeth. Um, so that's uh, what we're at at the moment with that, and that's where it ends up positioned. Next thing is going to be uh, mounting the ignition coils per cylinder. So the ignition coils, when we put those on, just looking at how I'm going to mount them. So we're going to have an ignition coil per cylinder. That's how they're going to look. More or less in that position. <laughs> 